Okay, 3.16, uh, show that two non-commuting operators cannot have a complete set of common eigenfunctions. And the hint we're given is to show that if these two operators, p hat and q hat, do in fact have a complete set of common eigenfunctions, then the commutator will always equal zero for any function in Hilbert space. So uh, first off, let's define what exactly it means for something to be complete. Right, because in this case, our condition is that these two operators share a complete set of eigenfunctions. So if a set is complete, what that tells us is that any arbitrary function f can be represented as an infinite sum of the members of that set. So if our eigenfunctions are f of n, right, then this tells us that any arbitrary function big F can be represented as an infinite sum from n equals zero to infinity of those complete eigenfunctions f sub n. And f sub n is eigenfunction, so furthermore we can say, okay, well, when we apply them onto these two operators q hat and p hat, we get measurable values. So q hat on the nth eigenfunction in this complete set is going to give us some observable value, little qn, uh, multiplied by that same fn. And similarly for p hat, p hat operated on fn is going to give us a value pn for that given fn. So in that case, if we try to define the commutator, right, the commutator of p hat and q hat is going to equal, on big F, is going to equal p hat acting on q hat acting on big F minus q hat, whoops, what is happening to my pen? q hat acting on p hat acting on big F. And if we represent F as the complete set of eigenfunctions as we did earlier up here, then in that case we get p hat q hat acting on the sum from n equals zero to infinity of fn minus q hat p hat acting on that sum again from n to zero to infinity of fn. And in that case, well, these things just distribute into the summation. So this is going to give us the sum of p n q n fn subtracted by the sum from n equals zero to infinity of qn, pn, fn. And remember, these are eigenvalues, so these are constants. So in that case, they can just be arranged however we want. This is just going to cancel itself out to a big fat zero. My big fat zero is very ugly, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, th this just cancels, so that means that in this case, because of the fact that the complete set of eigenfunctions, or because of the fact that P and Q share a complete set of eigenfunctions, the resulting commutator between P and Q is going to be zero no matter what for anything in Hilbert space. And remember what Hilbert space means, Hilbert space means that a function can in fact be decomposed via you know Fourier series and stuff like that. So this sort of representation is in fact viable because of the fact that we're in Hilbert space. And that's really kind of it for this problem. So now we can move on to the next chapter or the next section, which is talking about uh, the minimum uncertainty of a wave packet and everything that comes with that.